In today's podcast, we're going to talk about a magnificent quote, and we're going to discuss rules and talk about how to use relationship instead as the way you influence behavior. Welcome to the Art of Raising Humans. Hello, and welcome to episode 60 of the Art of Raising Humans. I'm Kyle. And I'm Sarah. We've reached 60. That's kind of cool, Yay. right? You know, we recently got some uh, cool feedback from the podcasting you know, place that gives us feedback <laughs> about the podcast. Yeah. And they, they shared the top five countries people are listening to our podcast. Fun. Yeah, yeah. that was really fun. I know, wasn't it? So yeah. we were kind of surprised. Yeah. Number one was not surprising. It was the United States. So thank uh-huh. you all, the U.S. listeners. Number two was kind of surprising. It was Spain. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? So I did not know people were listening to the podcast in Spain, but if you are, hello or hola. And then um, number three was, I think it was United Kingdom. That's right. United Kingdom. Number four was Germany. And number five was Australia. Okay. How cool is that? And I got another one that said we're like in the top 50 of parenting podcasts in Egypt. (laughs) <laughs> which is pretty cool. So anyway, so, hey, we just love uh, reaching the world with these healthy ideas about parenting. So please share them to whatever country you want to share them to. And hopefully um, they'll be able to understand what we're saying. But yeah, so just share the podcast. Um, we'd really love for you to continue spreading the word. Hope you had a fantastic Christmas over the weekend and we're going into a happy new year. So hopefully the, these weeks uh, are, are really fun. And so with this particular podcast, we wanted to build upon the last two we've done with boundaries because I thought during this season, you're going to be home with the kids a lot, probably. And and with that can provide a lot of opportunities for fun. You yeah. Know, a lot yeah. of great memories. Yeah. But it can also provide a lot of conflict, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of frustrating moments. A lot's going on. Yeah. And when you have a lot going a lot of stress. on. stress. Yeah. Even good stress yep. can yield conflict. Yeah. Traveling. We're all, all together, kind of yes. doing a lot of different things. Yeah. And Siblings are together more yeah. maybe than they usually Tensions are. Tensions rise. Yes. It's, it's also <laughs> maybe it's cold or the weather's keeping you in, indoors. Maybe, and, depending yeah. on where you're at. Yeah, yeah that's true. true. Yeah. So I was thinking, Sarah, I wanted to specifically dive into this quote by Dr. Becky Bailey that I think is, is, is really helpful. I remember when I heard this quote, um, it really helped me shift um, how my brain was wired um, through my through my childhood. Okay, that mm-hmm. I think a lot of parents when they come in to talk to us and see us and ask for help, mm-hmm. I think this quote is one that I use pretty frequently. Okay? okay, so the quote is this: "Rules don't govern behavior; relationships do." So rules Amazing. don't govern behavior; relationships do. Yeah. When you hear that, what does that mean to you? It means that at our best attempts to create the perfect list of rules for the classroom, the home, wherever we yeah. may be, even society, we see this is true. We create these magical lists of rules, but that isn't going to work. And we see it fail time and time again. Yeah. And people break the rules time mm-hmm. and time again. And that we should be looking at relationship yeah. to guide. Yeah. yeah. Behavior instead of our magical list of rules. Why do parents, teachers, why do they tend to 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 keep making rules? You know, even though they see it over and over again, at least what I'm right. noticing, it continues to <laughs> we fail. We keep trying. Yeah, the kid continues to break it, and they continue right. just to try to make new rules. Well, it's because they're worded wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I didn't no. say the magic rule. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's actually, I remember early on, I learned how to make a really good list of rules in one of my trainings, and mm. it was even how to word the rules to make them yeah. better rules. Yeah. And, um, and, and though some of that, there's definitely definitely benefit sure. to that. Yeah. I'm not throwing all that There's out. There's better ways to say it than others. Yes, yeah. yes, I, and, I, sure. and I think what you're saying is back when we first were counselors, it was like instead of do making— Do not, it was do. do. Yes. Sure. So, so yeah. there's this idea of, okay, guide them, and that is better. It so is. Instead of stopping it behavior, it's guiding I still, behavior. I still try to speak from that way. I'm going to direct instead of say stop. I'm yes. going to try to direct them into a behavior. Another yeah. podcast, but yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. all good stuff. Yeah. But we see that still fail. Mm-hmm. And it's because we need relationships. Yes. Yeah. And if you are in a relationship with a child, that's going to be far more successful in getting cooperation and moving in a certain direction than just something, just a list of rules. Yeah, yeah. So a kid who has a good relationship with you is much more likely to be cooperative. Just like we are. If you have yeah. a good relationship with a boss, a good relationship with a friend, a spouse, yeah. then when they're asking or telling something that they want from you, you're much more likely to go, yeah, definitely. Even if it's uncomfortable for you. Yeah. If my friend, we were going to go to lunch and she wants to go to this restaurant, she just loves it. And I don't really care for the food there, but I love my friend. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Well, you know, in you saying that, though, I'm even thinking of this quote. 
how could this quote apply to marriage, right? Like I'm thinking we don't yeah. set rules on each other. Right. It's well, I mean, we could try and it just wouldn't, That's what I'm saying, but it'd be, it'd be so, it it'd be so weird well. for you to be like, what is the rule? You just broke the rule. Yeah. I told you not to do this and yes. you did. Instead, yeah. it's about the relationship. You ask me to do things or I ask you to do things differently or, or whatever. And we do that because we care about each other. And it's right. the relationship that is the more compelling you know, piece of that yeah. discussion. Yeah. You know? Please talk. I want to be talked to this way or yeah. I don't like this. When you do this, I don't like it. What's going to invite you to change that is the relationship with us. Yeah. If we're a lot of tension between us, you're much less likely to go, all right, all right, I can do that. Or I'll stop doing this yeah. even because you matter to me. Yeah. And so it's the same thing with children. If we matter to them and they feel like they matter to us, they know that they matter to us. They're much more likely to gonna to, to do something we're asking yeah. than just a magically written. <laughs> if you've been listening to this podcast at all, anytime, th the reason why we call it the art of raising humans is we're trying to do sustainable things with our kids that work in all relationships, mm -hmm. you know? And so just and like- carry through life. Yes. So just like it would be weird for you to set rules on me as your husband, mm -hmm. you know, because even in that, you can hear that. Like if you were to set rules on me, it's like you're trying to control me. Yeah. You're trying to tell me how to behave. Yeah. Right. And I would have the same response that lots of the kids I see in, in the practice, the kids I'm helping and, and coaching, the, lots of their same responses. I, I typically see one of two things happen. Either you have a kid who goes, oh, yeah, I can't do that bad thing because my mom and dad set this rule. Mm -hmm. And if I did that thing, then something bad will happen to me. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's typically like if I break that rule, I'm going to lose my phone. If I break that rule, I can't go see my friend. So it's yeah. so so some kids will see it as, oh, without that rule, I I probably do a lot of bad things. I'm glad they have that rule. Or yeah. you have the second kid who says, I want to do these other things and that rule is inhibiting me from doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to find a way around that rule. You know? Yeah. It, it seems like that's the two. Depending on the personality. And the, yes. And that, that's where even like where parents will say, man, if you talk like this or you get those grades, you're going to lose your phone. I don't know how many kids I've had who have multiple phones. They've got other burner phones that they keep mm -hmm. hidden and they just pull out another phone. And so to them, they're just, they almost feel empowered or excited to get around the rule, you know, yeah. almost to say to their parents, ha ha, you think you have me, but you don't. Yeah. I think it reminds me even of workplaces. I feel like you see yes, this a lot it's so more. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are plenty of workplaces where they do have the rules. The clock in, clock out. You yeah. sit here. This is when this. And they have a yeah. lot of rules. But you see a lot of organizations moving in a different direction. Yeah. It's not so black and white. It's not so just now this, now this, now this. And all these rules set up. And, and they're creating a different environment that is more built on relationship and, and working together. So good. When you say that, I remember working for uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters, and I had this executive director who I remember him saying uh, back then the internet was kind of new, so we had like access to oh, yeah, these computers. Yeah, so you, you and I, I don't think we even had internet at our house yet. But 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 <laughs> so at, at the workplace, he would say to us, "Hey, I can't pay you guys what I would like to pay you. I know you, you the work you do for me is worth much more than I can give you. Um, mm. But I, what I do provide for you is a computer, and it has internet. And if there's things you need to use that internet for to get stuff done, then do that. As long as you're is done, feel free to do that. And I just found this great sense of freedom that there was this trust that he wasn't telling us, you can't do this on the internet. You can't do this. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. Or some companies who have, I think everybody has felt that with companies where they're constantly watching you and on top of you and they're yeah. waiting to see if you break the rules. And, and that's that brings to the point of when you set the rule, the point of setting the rule is not only to try to control the kid's quote unquote bad behavior, but it's mm -hmm. also to set a consequence or mm -hmm. some kind of punishment. So there is this like, you did this. Now this is going to happen. And yeah. it becomes a very black and white discussion. You know, if you follow the rule, you're doing good stuff. If you break the rule, you're doing bad stuff. And then we're going to need to punish you to then make sure you understand that you can't break that rule. Right. And th and that's the thing to me that starts to become um, it's not sustainable within the, the family over time because eventually that kid grows up and becomes an adult and the kid doesn't learn the skill that we want the kid to have, which is self-control. It yeah. is self-discipline. It is for that kid, just like we talked about in previous podcasts, to set their own boundaries, to eventually have boundaries on themselves. Like, like for instance, the the rule being, um, you know, the kid's got to get a certain level of grades. The kids can't get C's or D's. I'd rather the kid set that for himself. I'd rather mm -hmm. us have a discussion on what school is for and what kind of grades the kid wants 
wants to give. And so far in my many years, Sarah, of working with teenagers and kids, I've never had a kid who didn't want to get A's and B's. Every one of them are like, well, if I could get A's and B's, I'd love to get A's and B's. Mm -hmm. And when, when they sat down and talked to that kid, they might occasionally say a C because they think that class is really hard, but they wish they could get an A, a or B. And they're, therefore, we're not setting rules about these things. We're actually coming along and through the relationship partnering to then get the grades they're wanting to get. Well, and and going back to the workplace, just think about that, how you felt about that boss versus yeah. another boss that comes in with these rules about this is when you can do this and this is how you can do this. And we're watching you and and, you know, that yes. whole list of rules, how that felt just you as a person compared to a boss that that didn't come in with a list of rules, but came in with relationship and connected with you and yeah. and you, you know, and trusted you and and. You just you want to work harder for that boss, you and do. you yeah. want to. You're more motivated. Yeah. yeah, you want to help everything be successful, yeah. and so I think it's the same with kids. The list of rules accomplishes something, but yeah. when you come in with a relationship, and that child wants to keep that relationship, you want to go together to make this an, a successful thing—a classroom, yeah. a home, whatever it is. It's it's going to have a different impact. What What do you think the reason is that parents lean towards setting rules rather than just having these conversations? I think sometimes we don't know how to have the conversation. Mm. I think the rules are really big in society all yeah. over the place. Yes. That's what laws are, really. Of course, yeah. So it's kind of what we know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think you see that for thousands of years. Right? But yeah. it's it's what we know. And so we feel like, oh, I, I've got to create this because I, I've got to keep the kids safe. I've got to keep order. And yeah. I, I've got to, right, keep order. I've got to mm -hmm. keep everyone safe. And so everyone needs to know what's okay and what's not okay. Otherwise... It'll be crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I even think, like you said, you see it at places. That, these are our family rules. You know, you can buy those cool signs. Yeah, I yeah, put them in there. Yeah. And so it seems like this is the way to have law and order. And well, then this you can just point to back to it. Yes. Uh, you broke yeah, the rule. That's right. Yeah. And, and here's the other thing, Sarah. I think a lot of parents doubt the relationship will be influential enough. Oh, yeah. You know, that yeah. they don't think the kid will do it just because they've asked. They mm -hmm. think they'll do it because there's a rule and there's a punishment if you break it. Right. right? And that's what I really hope any listener listening to this, I want you to know the most compelling, influential thing you have to influence your kid is your relationship. You know, so many parents, when when I'm working with them and they're, did they set some rules? I'll tell them, hey, you can do that. But just just so you know, that's that's not going to that's not going to last. Eventually, the only I'm, I'm thinking about this, like you said, the work environment. I, I know I know when I would go to conferences, Sarah, and there would there would be someone speaking, someone I didn't know speaking about a topic I didn't care about. I knew the quote unquote quote, social norms or social mm -hmm. rules is you're not supposed to be on your phone. You're mm -hmm. not supposed to talk to the people next to you. But inevitably, everybody around me was doing that because nobody had a relationship with this person. Nobody really cared about what was being said. Whereas I realized if 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 somebody I cared about was speaking up there, somebody that I knew on a topic I was passionate about, I not only would keep those rules, but I would also help enforce those rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be like, come on, guys, this is great. Let's listen up here, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, so I was thinking about that in regards to work and regards to these ways in which we as adults interact all the time, how we don't follow the rules no, with our relationship on a regular basis. And so <laughs> yeah. yet we ask our kids to do the same thing uh -huh. and we believe somehow it controls their behavior. It keeps them from, mm -hmm. from doing bad things. Mm -hmm. And I'd really like parents to trust that who you are and the relationship you have with your kid is the most powerful, influential thing that you have in your tool belt. And so if a kid is continually doing behavior that you're not wanting them to do, for, for Sarah and I, we would just go back again to reconnect. We've got to, yes. you know, if you have that idea. you got to start there. I, I like that bank idea of i got to get back in the black. Yeah. i got to connect and enjoy my kid. I, I've, mm -hmm. I've got to remind myself that You my, need the relationship. <laughs> yeah, I've got to remind yeah. myself that the, my voice matters. The yeah. kid cares what I have to say. I'm telling you, these kids care way more than you think about what what, what you care about. You know, mm -hmm. I was even thinking about um, when when it comes to rules like for sleeping. You know, sometimes parents there'll, there'll be this conflict because the kid will want to stay up late and go out with their friends, right? Yeah. And the parents will curfew. set a yeah they'll set a rule on a curfew and say uh -huh. you got to be in by eleven. Now, why is the parent saying that? Well, there's a few different things. The parent's saying that because the parent wants the kid to be in at a safe time. They don't want mm -hmm. them out late. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, Safety and yeah. want well, make sure they get their sleep for school. The next yeah, day, but also the, the, the parent wants their sleep, you yes. know. And, and, and what I noticed was you'll have some kids who will frantically get back right at 11 because they don't want to get in trouble, yeah, right. 
So there's usually punishment coming if you're late. Or, or you have the other kid who will consistently come back at 11.05 or 11.07 mm-hmm. and then almost be testing how serious the parents are to whether or not they're getting in trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas I, I, what I would encourage the parent to, to be honest with the kid is almost every one of the parents, they want to go to bed before 11. Like mm-hmm. they're tired. They've got a job to do. They've got things that so, – so they really don't like waiting and waiting and waiting and stressed out about where the kid is and what's going on, you know? Yeah. And I would want them to use that as the compelling reason I want you home, you know? Instead of saying, here's the rule, you break it, this happens, I would instead say, hey, what is a reasonable time? That, that you coming home and the kid might say midnight. I would say midnight doesn't work for me because then I'm up worrying till midnight. I would really appreciate you home by 11. That's when I'd like, could we agree upon that? And then the kid, most of the time in session when I'm working with them, they, there'll be a back and forth, but mm-hmm. eventually we'll come to an agreement on, on what benefits them and, and them mm-hmm. trying to be with their friends, have fun, but also still benefits the parent. And then what I love about that, Sarah, is then when the kid does come home at 11, the kid isn't coming home at 11 because he, he's going to get in trouble if he doesn't. He's able to say, oh, cool, mom, you can go to sleep. Don't worry about it. You know, I want you to go to bed. And he feels like he's able to be helpful to his parents to be able to get their needs met, too. Yeah. What a a great example of a healthy relationship, too, where uh, going through their whole life, what are your needs? What are my needs? How can we get our needs met? What's our mutual goal here? Well, and I think along this line, I didn't even write this in the notes, but I think along this line, something else we probably wouldn't do and never have done um, is is with the rules is even having like written contracts and things like that with the kids, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, and I'm, I'm just saying that because it, it gets to this idea of just, once again, we would never do that in our marriage. Um, you know, yeah. it, it becomes this very black and white thing. And, and what I would like these conflicts to do is lead to more intimacy, yeah. lead to more closeness. I think every time these, these things happen, it's a chance for you to grow closer and mm-hmm. with the rules, with the contracts, it's very much, it's very in, impersonal. Well, I think it distracts too. It, it takes away any curiosity about, oh, mm, some, right. some some boundary was crossed, some rule was broken or something. But but then you just, that's that's all it becomes about. Yeah. And you're not really curious what was going on, what was yeah. happening. I mean, going back to the curfew thing, why were you late? Yeah. And maybe it was something real legitimate. Yeah. There was a car accident, we were yeah. stuck in traffic. Yep. And maybe it wasn't. Maybe mm-hmm. they're just having a fun time playing yeah. video games and got off too late. Yep. But it, either one, you those both are invitations for a conversation. Mm -hmm. But if you're just banking on that rule and, oh, well, you were late, then you don't get to have that conversation about time management or, you know, oh, you were having so much fun. It was really hard to get off. What can we do? You lose all of that in in just the, well, it was, I know broke the rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the. Well, I'm even thinking, I I know some kids, Sarah, who there's rules around driving and they can't, they're not supposed to speed and they have some kind of tracking device on their phone that says that. And and I've had kids come in who, I mean, this is kind of how I see rules happening in families is, you know, they, they try to speed up to go around a vehicle on the highway mm-hmm. and then they realize oh no I just broke that rule I was speeding you know and mm-hmm. now my parents are going to get an alert on their phone that I was doing that and already that kid the whole way home is ready for that conflict they're getting ready yeah. to, to, to fight and they're going to be defensive yeah. and they're the whole way they're thinking I'm so sick and tired of this that I, I'm just trying to get around they're, now they're going to punish me and there's this whole yeah. back and, and and the kid isn't able so just again, to you have lose a, the yeah, yeah yeah well and you're not wanting to create tension but yeah. a lot of anxiety in the driver and stuff and instead of the kid going, ooh, okay, mental note, I need to talk to mom and dad about this because whenever I'm just passing someone, it does this. And yeah. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm going to have a conversation, even if they really messed up. I didn't realize how fast I was going the, or the the speed limit changed. I didn't realize it. Instead of going, I'm going to have to go home and tell mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. you know, I didn't realize it. Sorry. Yeah. It, they have immediately create their defense. Mm-hmm. They're ready to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Totally. And instead of going into the relationship, it's they know they're going to have to address this rule that was yeah. broken. And that's yeah. not really where we want to go. No. And that's not going to. As they grow older, we want them coming more to us, even if they make a legitimate mistake. And you're not opening those doors. You're not creating the environment to have those conversations. Well, and even think about as they grow up, what's going to happen to these rules? You know what I'm saying? Like they're only sustainable while they're in your home and, you know, underage. But once Mm -hmm. they get older, they're going to leave your house. And Mm -hmm. then how is their behavior going to be governed then? And things aren't always going to go well. And Mm -hmm. you're going to hope they feel like they can come to you and have just that conversation. But, But even then, as they leave the house they become an adult, I hope you want them to come back and still speak to you in a way that you like, you know? 
yeah. still have to yeah. Yeah, instead of saying well, what's our rule the rules don't matter anymore that's right. i'm 18 i know and you'll hear kids say it. once i'm mm-hmm. 18 i'm out of this house i don't have to follow any of your rules that's a real yeah. common complaint i'm almost thinking sarah would it be helpful do you think instead of a family sitting down and creating the family rules but instead creating the family values you know, yeah. what is it we value in our relationships? Like even I'm thinking with Abby and her phone, one of the things we value is her being present, you know? Mm-hmm. And so so a lot of the boundaries placed around the phone that she placed on herself, it wasn't about these are the rules around the phone. It was like this is how we we value your time, we value your relationship, we want you to value that stuff too. And is this tool helping you or hurting you mm-hmm. to live out those values, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like even the rules of like, we don't talk to each other that way or, or, or you know, th- those kind of things that parents will say. Um, instead, uh, you want to value how we speak to each other. Yeah. Instead of having a rule that when we eat at the table, we put the phones down, I'd rather have a value that when we're at the table, we just put the phones away so we can all talk to each other, mm-hmm. you know? And, mm-hmm. and, and I, I, what I see from kids on a consistent basis is the rules feel like you're trying to control them and constrain them. Mm-hmm. And Which I think is how we feel about and, rules. And, and then if you follow the rules, you're now a better kid. Yeah. You, know, oh, that's an, I, you can get a value. I didn't even bring that up. When you have siblings, you have one kid who's great at yeah. following the rules, yeah. and that's the kid that the parents secretly like a little bit better, and then the mm-hmm. other one is constantly pushing against the rules. And so when you don't... Well, when you, even if you don't feel that way, they feel that yes. way. They will right. start to yeah. form this identity of I'm a rule breaker. That's right. Yeah. And another one, I'll have parents come in that this kid's a rule follower. Yes. Always follows I'm the, the rules. I'm the good one. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that Which kid, creates its own yes. own set of, of struggles in yeah. life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would encourage you over this break, I hope this kind of gives you some, some, some things to think about as you're with the kids a lot, is rules don't govern behavior relationships do. Spend this time that you have with them really getting money in the bank, really enjoying the kids you know and instead of thinking what's the new rule we need to set in place to control their behavior come alongside hand in hand co-create some of these boundaries these expectations these values together as a family what a cool time right it'd be great over this time before they go back to school to like what is it we value what what kind of relationships do we want to have are we as a husband and wife modeling that to the kids those values and then how are we helping them live those values out you know Mm -hmm. i think it'd be a great time to do that and uh, just have that discussion yeah. And so uh, we would encourage you, uh, once again, we'd love your feedback on these um, these podcasts. Hope you share it. Hope this helps families. Um, we're speaking a lot this coming coming up soon in, in September, I mean, in spring. And Sarah and I are also soon going to be videotaping these. So I think at the start of the new year, you might be able to find us on YouTube and see us actually doing videotapes of these then podcasts. Then you can see all our hand motions that That's right, right. now you can't see. Right. <laughs> well, I, I definitely talk a lot with my hands, but we'd love to just make that connection with you visually. Um, so we hope that that will be another fun way to connect with you as an audience and um, we can continue helping families uh, throughout the world. So I hope you had a great Christmas and just want to wish you Happy New Year. Thank you for listening. The Art of Raising Humans podcast should not be considered or used as counseling, but for educational purposes only. 